All right, this video is for Kent specifically, but for everybody as well. On our CG Cookie Collab, we're trying to figure out how to use the asset library and asset browsers with collections. And Phil and I spent some time during Epic Wednesday, and I think we found a pretty good workflow. So on asset libraries, if you don't have your own custom library, I recommend you make one. You just go to Edit Preferences, and under File Paths, add in a new asset library. I've got my location, and I just give it a name. Save my preferences. And I've got a Blake default Blender file right now. And all I have to do is go to File, Link. I'm going to link in Omar's Night Scene. And under Collections, I grouped everything into one collection, and I can click on Link. When you link in a collection, what ends up happening is you don't get just the collection. You end up getting a group instance as well. And this is really just an empty that the linked collection sits in. And because this is a group instance, it's technically like a single object with a linked collection inside of it. You can mark this as an asset. It just doesn't show up with a thumbnail. And since I'm on my current file, if I were to go to my library, nothing is there related to this marked asset. So all I have to do is save this blend file and go to File, Save As. And I just have to save it into that asset library. And now you'll see, you can click the reload button on your library if it doesn't show up and you should see that asset is now here. So I can go to File and New. With a new blend file, I can drag and drop in the entire Spice Vendor night scene in one asset. And it links in this group instance. So I can't move anything. Go to actually appreciate this a little bit more. We're going to go to Viewport Material Preview. Okay, so we've got the linked Spice Vendor diorama scene loaded in. And it's just showing up as a linked group instance with the linked collection on the inside of it. Now, if I want to move the entire collection around, I would just right click on the group instance and would make that library override. Under ID data, make library override. This only works on a single object, so don't try to do this to a collection. A grouped instance is technically an empty, so it will work. If I want to override everything down to the sub collection level, I can click on the linked collection and I can right click. And under ID data, there's another operator option called make library override hierarchy. And what that does is it recursively goes through every single collection and sub-collection and overrides every one of them. But it still keeps everything tied to the scene. Let's go ahead and do that. And I gotta wait a little bit for it to load. This takes me a minute or two for it to go through all of the collections in this scene. All right, now that it's done thinking, it's gone and overridden every collection inside of this main scene collection for the Spice Vendor Night that Omar made. I can click on the individual collection items and I can duplicate them. and add some more variety to my scene. You get the idea. Now this also works for rigs. So let's go back to non-material preview mode. So Mevin comes in with a rig. He's got all his bones associated with it. And I can do the same thing. I click on the Melvin and go to Make Library Override Hierarchy. And now I can take that into pose mode. And I still maintain the rig. Pretty cool. So that's how you bring in entire collections as assets. You just have to first save a file with the asset linked in so that it's tied to a group instance. And then you can mark that group instance as an asset and bring it in.